morning, I'm Barbara McKinch. I was pregnant at the age of 21, and the nurse at the family health clinic where I went for the test asked me if the pregnancy was planned. I told her no. She immediately referred me to a physician who would terminate the pregnancy. She never offered any counseling, no alternatives, and I was afraid of judgment, afraid to trap my boyfriend of five years, afraid to tell my parents. Still, it was my choice, my decision, a decision I've regretted for more than 28 years. At that time, there was no 24-hour rule mandating that a, that a woman seeking an abortion had to be given unbiased information about the procedure. And so, just moments before the scheduled procedure, I sat across the desk from the doctor, listening to what he planned to do to my body, and I went numb. The picture in my mind bears no image of his face, no name, I, I recall no name. But what I do remember is this very posh and upscale office in, a, in an upscale suburb of Detroit. I remember the live fish water, the live saltwater fish tank that he had in his waiting room. And mostly I remember the impatience in his voice when he asked, do you want to do this or not? After the two and a half minute counseling session. So with heaviness in my heart, tears streaming down my face, I said yes not knowing what that yes, how that yes, would impact the rest of my life. And my boyfriend and I didn't discuss it from that day forward until 15 years later when we heard a message in our church on the sanctity of human life. And the feelings I had repressed for so many years came rushing back like a flood. I wept for the loss of my baby, our baby, the life that I chose to end, out of fear, out of ignorance, and partly because it was my legal choice to do so. <coughs> my husband apologized to me that evening for having the abortion. And we are forgiven by the grace of God. And we are healed, but we are forever changed. We have three children today. I'm a registered nurse. I believe the choice, whether or not to have sex outside of marriage, a committed marriage relationship, the choice whether or not to use contraception, the choice to parent or make an adoption plan, I believe these are choices we don't take away from Americans. They are good choices. They are choices they should have. But I wish the sanctity of human life had never been reduced to a choice. It's more than an issue. This is not an issue. I hope that senators who still continue to look at it as an issue will today see it as light. So that's what it is. And Ohio has before it now, right now, such a tremendous opportunity to do something good and to do something different. It makes me proud to be a citizen of this great state. And so I urge you, senators, dear senators, please, please, it's time. Pass the heartbeat bill. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Kristen Keith. Senators, as a fellow American, I am sure you can see this tragedy has gone on long enough. Abortion was made legal only through an act of perjury committed on a Supreme Court stand in Roe v. Wade. Women who so famously made this monumental case precedent for today's legal standing lied about being raped. She is now an advocate for pro-life. I had an abortion 18 years ago, and it should have never been allowed. The safest place on earth is a mother's womb. When a crime is being committed in somebody's body, that is not a right to choose. Abortion is a crime, not only against the child, but also against the mothers left behind, who ache to hold their child and agonize over the, the act that they have done. Well, at the abortion clinic 18 years ago, I got up to leave before the procedure, and I was given a bell and told to sit down and relax. I was not given any local or painkiller, but a blue valium. This is standard procedure. They did this to change my sober thought process. The next day, I wanted to die in the place of my child. My life then went into a downward, self-destructive spiral that I am now, only 18 years later, being healed by the grace of God. But I probably will always suffer from post-abortion syndrome. I grew up in the Ohio public schools. I, they taught me in school my baby was just a blob of tissue and abortion was just terminating an unwanted pregnancy. And that is a lie. My baby was ripped limb from limb from my womb, and I could not hear their voice. 
If I would have been given the right to hear and see my baby's heartbeat on an ultrasound, no Valium could have kept me from running out of that room. Instead, I made a foggy, drug-induced decision in fear to kill my child. 90% of women who see that heartbeat decide to keep the baby. What does that speak to us? A 13-year-old girl can walk into an abortion clinic and murder her child with no consent from her parents for a medical procedure. There is no other medical procedure in our country that this is allowed. This is not a choice. We are giving, what, we're, what we are giving them is entrapment. We are trapping a scared child into making a, a decision harshly that they cannot possibly understand the lifelong consequences. It is a parent's right to know what their child is doing and counsel their child on a moral and spiritual matter that will follow them into eternity. We are jeopardizing their immortal souls. No one ever tells you at the abortion clinic that 30% of women may never have children again due to this procedure. No one ever told me that I would be murdering the only child that God gave me. My life has been devastated because of this abortion. To teach our children that murdering your child is a choice and there will be no spiritual ramifications to face is a blatant lie. Abortion is murder. There are people sitting in jail for double homicides for killing pregnant women. Why are those babies' lives more viable than my child's was? I should be in jail with those people. My crime was much more heinous. I killed my own child and it was legal. I beg you on behalf of the genocide of babies that have been killed, but also on behalf of the mothers that mourn to see their child's face. Please pass House Bill 125, the heartbeat bill. My child will never run, never laugh, and never sing. If I had seen their heartbeat, who knows what, they would, what wonderful things they may be doing for our world today. Senators, please take a stand to take the type of voices who can't be heard. Leave their voice today. Good morning, I'm Carrie Butler. I'm here today to speak for the unborn, the ones who are already sacrificed, and the ones who still have a chance for life. The abortions I had changed my life as well as the lives of my family. When I told my 13-year-old son, that I had had an abortion, he asked me why. I didn't really have a lot of answers for him. Other than I did not understand the consequences of my choices. I know that if I had seen a sonogram and heard the heartbeat of my babies that I would not have made that decision, an uninformed decision. There was no information given to me about life or with a baby that was growing inside of me. Like Kristen, I was given a blue volume to calm my nerves so that I could lay still and be quiet. I ask you today to move to vote on House Bill 125, the Heartbeat Bill, that will truly offer the choice of life to women and unborn children. 